Okay, cool. So we should be live now. So welcome everyone to the second stream. And in this stream, I have some different couple ideas that we could uh, do. So um, I'm just quickly going to go through what I'm thinking to do in this live stream. And I'm going to show off as well what um, we did in the last live stream. And I kind of changed some bits off screen as well. I'm going to show that as well. So um, today was kind of an idea just to start setting you know, up the chat system for the player. So let's say um, in the game there's going to be different NPCs and stuff. And then let's say if the player approaches one of the NPCs and presses a certain button, the NPC should be um, should say something. And um, so we kind of need some kind of a way of showing the text and stuff, uh, kind of like a text bubble in the game. Um, I, th I think I'll just be gonna working on that for the, this uh, stream. So um, when I was doing the online, the multiplayer textures, I kind of did these uh, text boxes. So this is kind of for the for the text and stuff, and this is kind of for the player. So when the player is, is saying something or the NPC is saying something, something, uh, this would show up and stuff. I was kind of thinking just maybe I'll try to re reuse the same um, the same textures from from before. Okay, so um, now I'm going to quickly just go through uh, whatever I've done last live stream. And just quickly, I just wanted to mention that uh, last live stream was around 1 hour and 40 minutes, I think. Uh, so I'll try to make this one a bit shorter, maybe around an hour or something like that. Okay, cool. So I'll just quickly change the view to um, Unity. Okay, cool. So uh, last live stream, we managed to implement uh, some new hairstyles for the Goblin character and a new skeleton character, as you can see there. And off screen, I just kind of made um, some adjust uh, adjustments to the animations and I added uh, three hairstyles for the skeleton character as well. I'm just going to quickly show off that. Okay, so that's the Goblin character that we added in the latest devlog. And as you remember, there was only one um, hairstyle kind of for the Goblin character. So I added two more. I had a different type of ears and two different type of ears, kind of got its uh, flat ears and the horn looking things. Okay, and then the last, um, last live stream, we started to uh, draw and do the other character. So um, I have the skeleton one. So I kind of had uh, it drawn up as well. So all the animations, uh, like idle running and stuff, is already done as well. And I did uh, these three hairstyles off screen. So you can see there's horns, there's the arrow, so the arrow coming through the head. This is actually um, suggested by one of the people that were watching the live stream from before. So that's kind of cool. Cool idea, so I just decided to um, import that and just do it. And then the last one is just like a crown. I'm not sure really about the crown. I might change that as well. I'll see how it goes. And um, the same, same system works as well. Saving system as well. Be working okay. Okay. So now, um, the idea was just to have a NPC. I might, I might reuse the the old um, all player character textures just as. A, an NPC just so that we could see something happening there. So, um, and I think I need to change the the uh, tile set. As you can see, it's not really that great. Unless I'm just gonna put um, put the NPC here. Okay, so we can start with uh, with the code. I think at the start now. I'm just gonna um, gonna put some create a uh, code. You create a folder for that as well. Okay, so if we create one for chat system. Okay, cool. And I create something like um that controller or something like that. For now, I might change the name later. Okay. Cool. Okay, so we have this one done. I'm just quickly quickly gonna open that. And I'm gonna this loads.
Okay, I need to import uh, the texture on the screen as well, so you would say the the cat. It's taking ages now. No the Visual Studio. Okay, we're done. So I'll just take uh, an old old texture. I might just take um, find one though. Okay, so I might just take uh, character here. I don't really need the uh, full printing to be able to do Okay, so the character. What do we need to put here now? Oh god, one second. Uh, okay, I'll just quickly gonna launch the game and see what goes in the other ones. I remember now. Okay, cool. So we need to say. All right. So if we change this to. Barrett, yeah. Oh crap! Oh, it didn't remove there. One sec. That's fine. Let's quickly gonna go do this. Just copy new one, new version of it. Delete this one. Okay, so we have the character now on its own. Where did it go? So let's say this would be the NPC character, right? So if you move it here. You remove. Yeah, so if we see. No character. Uh, and. What's here again? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Here we need to put the character name, I think. Okay, so his name is NPC. Oops. Don't need the camera anyway. What's this? Username, blah blah blah, that's gone. We need to keep that. Okay. Now, that should appear as a male character with a blonde haircut. We all right? Okay. Hairstyle's male, is that right? Oh yeah. Crap, I need Eggs, because the the pet was following the player actually, so <laughs> we don't really need that. Okay, cool. So we have this. I'm not sure why it's not working. The hairstyles are not working for some reason. Male. Oh yeah, because it's blonde short. Okay. Add to this. That should probably appear on the screen. One character with male. Yeah. Ooh. It's playing the. The um the animation but it's fine okay. There's that to trigger I think. Oops, never mind. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I know why. Change this static trigger. We need to anyway increase this a bit because this is kinda of gonna be the area where the oops where the player interacts with the NPC, so let's say if the player is gonna, if us, oh, we're gonna step into the circle, then we're gonna interact with it. Okay, cool. Now if we go to here, okay, so we can't push him anymore and stuff and the pet doesn't actually follow it. Okay, so we have, um, we have this player, right? We have the circle class set as trigger. Doesn't really matter. Then with that, okay, two. Okay, so now we need to write some kind of a code to, so that we be able to interact with the uh, with NPC. But before we do that, I'm just gonna quickly add the textures. I think I should have them here. I oh, yeah, actually have them here. Okay, that's all right. So, okay, so let's say. Okay, cool. Let's say when we approach the character, right? Um, when you approach NPC, this uh, should appear above the NPC. As remember, there's three different kind of animations for it. So in order to do that, I need to 
on this chabable. I need to quickly create an animation for the chabable. Okay, cool. So. Character, okay, never mind. Quickly can create an animator for this. We go into here. I think I have, should have a folder for animations. Okay. Create a new one, call it chat. And we create a chat um chat animator thingy. Um where is it? Controller, okay. We call it chat controller animator. We can attach this uh, this bit here. Okay, so we just need to make a quick idle animation of the chat bubble. Idle chat, right? Okay, we could set this to 12 because I think it's the same as the characters. Um, right? Yeah, it's 12 as well. Okay, so we're gonna keep the same number of frames, at the same time measure and stuff. Okay, so now um, we have this. I have another project window open. Yeah, okay, cool. So we need to find the textures. Now, if you go into this, we can create an animation. We have it here. The first frame would be that. One would be this. I think it's probably important. There you go. So now, whenever a player would approach the character, this would be invisible, by the way. So that would set to be visible. And we can just kind of have this going over the head. And then, once the user presses some kind of a button, the, um, the thingy would disappear again. And maybe another window would pop up, but we'll see about that. Okay, so we have we have this now, right? And in trying to disable it, I think that's okay for now to be in this position. I just quickly gonna check how it looks like inside the game. Be fine. Yeah, that's okay. So um, okay. need to. Yeah, and vanity items. Okay, let's see. Maybe that's gonna be better. Maybe we're not gonna be clipping through the guy anymore. Hope. Yeah, we're clipping through the hair somehow, though. Where? Are we? No. Um, I think it doesn't have a. Oh, it does. Use. Actually, above the uh, yeah, that bubble is five. Okay, so we have the we have the circuit collider there. A bit higher because it doesn't need to be clipped in the ground. Okay, cool. So whenever the player you, player would step on this, um, this would appear, right? We can disable this for now. Create a new one and call it chat. I wonder if we have this as a main variable or this should be attached to every single bubble. I think, yeah, we should might be, maybe do that actually. Okay, so with that chat control here. Okay, now we can go into the script and kind of work on it. Oh, I need to open it here. Second, doesn't show up. Once again, um, yeah, cool. So now we need just to write some uh, some code. Okay, so it needs to have a reference to the uh, bubble object. So we can just do public uh, game object uh, chat bubble, right? But why does this need to be attached onto the chat bubble itself? I think so. It's gonna be just easier. Okay, so if you remove this one from here. Quickly gonna I'm just adding um the script in the chatable instead of the Visual Studio thing. Okay. That doesn't really change anything. Okay, so then we need to have a reference to the circle collider, I think, right? Oh Chatbubble does have a circle collider. So it had, the NPC has it. Okay. So you can just do a public one again. It's gonna be easier. Do uh 
circular collider yeah so a circular collider 2d and then we could say collider for this and okay oh yeah okay so i think uh i'm just gonna move the circular collider off screen again onto the chat bubble itself i think right if you want to keep it there yeah so i need to just move it to the moving the circular collider now just onto the actual um game object that's the that the script is attached to okay cool so we have it here and I think it's on collision enter or is it no it's on trigger actually or trigger enter to d okay so whenever um a player enters the the um the circle the collider as you see before is something which should happen okay so first we need to check if it's actually the player that's colliding with the or entering the bubble because let's say we don't really want the uh the pet to actually activate the menu because like the pets wouldn't really talk with the npc <clears throat> okay so we need to say um if collision dot is a game object yeah dot tag equals equals player so um i'll show you now in a second as well go back to unit there we go okay cool so um let's say every single uh player object or the actual player would have a tag called player as you can see there on the on the right so um it has a player tag basically um what i'm doing now in code is just simple just checking if the player if uh something that entered the collision box has a tag that that says uh player and in which case it does because uh, the player is actually going in anyway so we check that and then after that we can say that um actually we need to check if the chat bubble is active we can do if chat bubble dot set self active i think active self yeah so if it's active we don't do anything and then let's say else if I actually don't need to say that okay if it's not active we can say that it's active and that's it we don't really need to do anything else so we can say chat bubble dot set active true right and then on i need to do another one on trigger exit 2d as well we need to check the same thing just um instead of actually activating it we need to disable it That's kind of simple one, and it should work. I think. Quickly gonna swap the U to UD. Okay, cool. So now, um, okay. So now, when we're gonna uh, get closer to the player, the thing it should appear. Or it does. Oh yeah, it does not because uh, I forgot to attach the different things here. Okay, um, made a mistake again. I think I just need to attach this to the NPC player. Let me just do that again. Fine for now, whatever. Then, is it chat? Chat manager? Yeah, I'll try to. Okay, cool. So, we have the collider here, and we have the chat bubble here. Okay, so it didn't work before because I forgot to attach reference the thingies. Okay, so we get close to it, it should appear. Yeah, you can see if we leave it now, it disappears as well. And the same animation is just playing over and over again. We don't really need to mess with that for now, I think. Now I'm thinking. Um, okay, so as you can see, um, I had this really bright uh, orange button for the interaction between the player and the pet. I'm thinking if I should do something similar here as well, just to kind of uh, show it a bit more to, or 
off to the player that you can actually interact with it. Um, okay. Let's see. I think I'll just leave it for now, I think. Yeah. Alright, so we have this working now. So as you can see, and if the pet goes through, it doesn't, doesn't work. It's only if the player goes through it. Okay, cool. So, next thing would be just to um, maybe do a, do the actual bubble throwing up. Okay, and I'm thinking, I think I had something, something similar already done. Anyway, um, for the NPC, I could just add another UI canvas, I think. Right, canvas, okay. The chat canvas, right? Then we can add other image. I think so, right? Is it image or input field? No, input field is in, it's not for that. Or text. Text doesn't matter. I can just okay. So let's say um, at bubble, right? Yeah, I just need to set it as. Um, like this for now okay now we can just kind of set it on the bottom oops not that set the oh no it's actually this yeah i oh, know it's not changing there oh yeah there we go okay so we changed the image from this we need to find the the bubble that i was talking about before there we go Okay, cool. If we press set native size, okay. Let's we'll say this is how it would appear. I think we just need to move it a bit up, just a tiny bit up. Okay, nope, that didn't work. Actually, anyway, I'm just gonna quickly move this around. I can change the, uh, the position a bit later. Okay, so if we make it maybe a bit bigger, this one. Zero. Uh, okay, that's a bit too big now. <laughs> so I can that, go back again. Uh, just put it higher up. I just want it to be maybe a bit more like this. That makes sense. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Okay. Anyway, let's start off with this for now. So, um, cool. I think that looks okay, right? The blocking the character though, so it's a bit, a bit weird. Um, hmm. I don't really want it to be higher up, right? Does it make no sense? Okay, one second. Thinking where where could we actually put it? Um, I could maybe make it a bit more less solid, so you could see through it, maybe. Um. Okay, I think for now we can just keep it here. I'll be fine. Um, so the main idea is just so this would appear whenever um, there is uh, stays uh, near the near the NPC as well. Okay, so we need to do kind of similar things. Okay, I'm just quickly gonna go to code again. Okay, so this checks if the player entered. This checks if the player. Uh, left uh, the area right okay so we need to create another one to check if the player is staying close to the close to the um the npc right so if if the player is staying we don't need to do anything with the bubble because it's already um as if it's already uh, enabled and then we need to check um 
check let's say if the player presses something so we can check for now and do something like put get key down so that let's say i don't know maybe something like um so e is for let's and we can do i don't know something like h for the npcs just for now okay so if the player presses the h button we need to make another um, reference here to the game object of the big text bubble thingy, right? That bubble. What would it actually look like the name of this? Um, that text box. Box, right? Okay. So we need to do the same thing. If that text box active self. If it's not active, uh, not active, we need to activate it, enable it. Okay, cool. So we have that, and we need to actually disable it as well. That that's probably we can do it after after the last bit of text is shown or something like that. We can do that a bit a bit later. Okay, cool. So now if I build this H, okay, I need to not forget that. <laughs> Let's go to Unity screen again. Cool. Go back on Unity screen. And so now Xbox. Now I just need to uh reference this as well. Disable it here. Okay. Now, if you can see, uh, it's gone. And if I press H, nothing happens. And if we go close to the NPC, same animation plays. And if I press H, nothing happens. Okay, cool. <laughs> Wait, um, what's it happening? On trigger stay to D. If the player, blah, blah, blah. That text box, am I? Yeah, it should be be okay I think um might be missing something hmm as I yeah that's weird that's referenced and the players play yeah because that wouldn't show up um for some reason it's not showing up why though Super weird. H. Oh, wait, what? I didn't show up. Yeah, that's weird. One second, I'll try that again. That's super weird because it showed up for no reason. Um, what? How, how did it show up? There we go, again. If collision dot game object tag player get key down. Second, maybe we should need to change that to something else. Get key. Would that work wonder? Different. Yeah. There's some bits in the code, but I'll see if so. Nope. For some reason activates whenever you're entering the um, collision why don't you stay mm. okay one second quickly gonna try something else and see if that works let's see now there you go yeah that works now for some reason just didn't what okay now we have the text um uh, text bar showing up okay that's cool so then um 
when the text box is uh activated we shouldn't be able to um we shouldn't be able to uh control the character anyway so we need to kind of find a way how to disable it okay so we go back to the code nope okay cool go back to the code um so this is when we enable it and then if um do an update if that text box actually itself i think we can try to find the um uh, player controller script of the, of the actual player okay so we need to do um to actually do it here private what's it called player controllers put player movement so this way we're gonna get uh, the reference to the the file that is attached to the player that controls the movement. You can say player movement from right now. Uh, nope. Equals game object dot nope. Find game object with tag. We're gonna use the tag again, so we can use the player tag. And then we can get the component component attached to the player, the script attached to the player. That's called player movement. Okay, so we have the reference now, and then we can do here. Dot set act. Ooh, nope. Oh, nope. Enabled it. Yeah. Cool. False. Okay, let's test that out. Swap the screen again. Did you get used to the different screens? There we go. <laughs> okay. So you have it here. Then if we press H, okay, cool. And as, as you can see now, I'm pressing the buttons and nothing happens because uh, we disabled the movement of the um, of the of the player. Okay, so we can do just quickly do a uh, thingy that it destroys the chat chat text box and or sets sets it to false, and then allows us to move again. I'm just quickly gonna go and attach some simple text to the text box so it doesn't appear that it has nothing on it. Okay. Say hello and welcome to the grass. Um a forest area. Okay, then in the future we need to kind of find a way to find a way to do multiple um, boxes and stuff. Well, I think I'll just do major stuff off the screen because it takes a while. Okay, so we have this now, and if we go, oh yeah, we need to actually properly line it onto the box. I think I had us some kind of a uh, yeah there we go there we go okay so if we do some like that was pretty okay right we can yeah make it a bit bigger too big <laughs> and we can change the color as well to match or I think. Nope. Nope. Um. Yeah. I think I'll just maybe put a bit to the side. Okay. So hello, welcome to the forest area. Um. Uh, hope you're enjoying the scenery. Okay, nope, <laughs> not smart faces. Okay, so we'll say hello and welcome to the forest area, and I hope you're enjoying this area. Okay. Um, of course, later on, I was kind of thinking just to um, attach some kind of an image here as well of the, of the player, of the NPC actually, so it wouldn't look just plain. But again, I'll do that probably off screen. Okay, so that's pretty okay. And disable that again. Then if we go back to the code. Cool. Now, once this is triggered, 
can do self quarantine, I think, something like that. One second, let's quickly Google that. Forgetting. Basically, we're gonna call a timer, and then after some certain amount uh, passes, then we just undo all the things that we that we did before. Just keep forgetting how to actually properly write this every single time. <laughs> One second. Okay, so star routine, and then we quickly need to make a public void uh, that box closed. Okay, so we can call this here in some sort of amount of time. Time to wait. Do I don't know? Maybe like four seconds for now, right? Then this can be here though. Um okay. if it's active then it's active then call this. Hopefully this is not gonna flood the uh, console. Okay. So now we just keep, can keep it at that. So we can say um that box xbox dot that active false cool. we can do um enable the player movement again okay so once the box activates after four seconds it's gonna close down again and we're gonna be able to move okay let's see how this is gonna work Okay, now this should be working straight away. Okay, cool. So if we go close to the player, we press H. Not sure why we're not. Here, I'll work it again. Um, yeah, they're colliding, they have to be. For some reason it just doesn't want to work. Sometimes. It's weird. Figure could say, okay. See what, if I go quickly press it, sometimes it works. Second. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll just try to quickly change the code again. Just the way that it checks if it's active or not. Okay, cool. So now hopefully it's gonna work. Nope, it's not working. Sometimes it doesn't want to work. It's so weird. It's like that text box. Hmm. Even does even let me turn it on again. Okay, yeah, let's try this. I'll change one more thing and see if that works. Okay, so I can't move anymore, so that means that it should be should be enabled. Yeah. Look. Mm.
Yeah, just change some code. Hey, Gabriel. <laughs> Okay, so code again. I'll see if that works or if it helps any bit. It is super weird. Must be with the trigger. Type box, type box, set active true. Mm. I'm just messing with the code again to see if it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gabriel. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to add some uh, some different textures and different stuff now throughout the live streams. So, and I'll try to um, I'll try to maybe do a devlog at the end of this week if it's possible. I'll see. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, so I disabled the part where it disables the text box some certain amount of time. For some reason it still doesn't, doesn't register. There you go. Okay, so now we can see this showing up, that it shows up there with the text box and stuff. The text looks a bit weird, I think I'm going to change that as well. We'll see for now, for now it's okay. Okay, so technically in a few seconds we should be able to move some reason that doesn't work either. But, uh, um, we'll see what's wrong. <laughs> Thanks, lad. <laughs> okay. Um, very weird. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to put a debug statement in there and see if the actually pressing the button works. So it should say something in the console. Um, H is pressed, right? We're using the H to. Um, okay. So now, if. Uh, when we're gonna be pressing H, we should be able to see here on the console saying something. I'm not sure what this is saying, no. Oh yeah, okay, that doesn't matter. That's fine. Okay. Cool. If we go here, you can see I'm pressing H but nothing really happens. And then it happened when I actually loaded. Okay. Super weird. Um But now I'll just try to remove the where it checks if the player, player tag is the actual player. Yeah, I'll try to remove that. It works. So now if you, go, you get close to it, press H. Nothing happens. <laughs> it's so weird. Thing is, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Hmm. For every collider to the other that is touching the trigger to the. Okay. Is this working? Mm. Okay, there's some bits again, and we'll see if that actually helps. If not, I'm just gonna think I'm just gonna move on from this bit and maybe try to solve it off off screen. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work for some reason. <laughs> it 
thing is, is the actual thing, the chat bubble that we had before actually worked. Uh, yes, Gabriel, I'll just try to, um, try to quickly change some bits of the code, but I'm just going to quickly show you. So, um, whenever, what I'm trying to do now, whenever the, if the player stays in the, uh, collider kind of area and, um, uh, if I press, let's say H, uh, the text box should appear for some, for some reason it doesn't doesn't work i'm not sure why <laughs> it's so weird because uh, i have here the chat bubble that appears above the npc and that works perfectly fine but then um whenever i try to do this it just doesn't work <laughs> if you have any idea if i'm doing something wrong here uh give me out because that that basically does the same thing and it, it works fine Super weird for some doesn't want to work. I'm thinking of the players um uh, should have to be a trigger, right? What if instead of on sugar, I might try to do on collision enter CD, right? No, oh, stay CD. Okay, let's try that. So, um, if we press H, this should happen. Okay. Let's see, even though it should it's not probably going to work quickly. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's so weird because uh, trigger state it just doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so I'll try to do the your way, the way that you said. Okay. Okay. Quickly create a bool same in here. Very close, and then we can say that um. Here, let's say right. Say to true. Then say this to false, right? Okay. So now when we do this, say um, yeah, if it would get e down. So weird that like Unity has like been going on for like years and then <laughs> the development team has been updating the unity and stuff but still has some weird bugs that shouldn't really exist um key code h let's say okay then if oh yeah actually i can move that as well so it doesn't mess up so if we press H, we can enable that text box rest. Um, okay, enable this. Then we can disable that and start this as well. But for now, after four seconds, it's just gonna spear. Thanks, Gabriel. <laughs> Thanks for help. <laughs> And okay, cool. So now, oh. you're right. It's not enabled. Okay, cool. There we go. That's way better. Uh, this should disappear as well, I hope. Oh, crap, I've got to change the screen again. Okay. 
find a better way of dealing with the screens. <laughs> so that's uh, the thing, uh, Gabriel, that you said actually worked now. That's pretty cool. So now I'm just going to show it again. So now if you go close to it, press it, oh, H, yeah. Working again for a second. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, I, don't, uh, I was thinking kind of just to show the screen uh, view, but then it's a bit weird. I don't really want to just show the screen view. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really cool to just, just switch yourself. I mean, automatically, so you, you would need to switch it. Okay, so if you press H. I'm just quickly going to change the boolean value to public and see if that, that does anything. Okay, so for now it says... Mm. Some reason it's so weird it doesn't work properly. It's a simple thing. <laughs> it should it should just work straight away. Mm. Yeah, I'm just gonna show it again. So we could see that the um, boolean value was working correctly and then if I press H checks if the boolean value is there it should work set active to true we call this wait am I something oh yeah I am <laughs> one second Yeah, I think that's what's messing up everything. Oh my god. Uh, completely forgot to add this. Yeah, I think that should be working now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna swap again. We're really bad with those. Okay. So if we go back to this. They're just calling it straight away so it wasn't working properly. Now this should work. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And this should disappear after, as well after like four seconds. Yep. <laughs> so it was actually not the uh, not the problem with the trigger stay. It was actually the problem how I set up the timer thing.
Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool as well. <laughs> cool. Finally, we have that sorted now. Thanks, Gabriel, for the help. <laughs> okay, so we kind of have the basic um, interactions already uh, done with the NPC. Now, yeah, it looks finally, <laughs> it's finally working. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, I haven't really thought about uh, doing, um, what to actually do with the storyline and stuff. I was kind of just thinking that, um, what's the storyline, uh, just to have that, like, um, game purpose, just to collect as many pets as you can, kind of like Pokemon, but like, in a different way, it's gonna be like, um, let's say that all the animals are kind of getting an extinct, and then you need to collect um, one type of uh, species of the animals, let's say from all all the different animals and stuff. So you kind of need to collect them, and then let's say NPCs would have um, would give you some sort of a quests maybe to do or something, something like that then maybe you could um, find the pets along the way or maybe some pets could be able could only be able to buy them from the shop or something like that as well I'm not really too sure I need to kind of sit down and write the whole the whole story for the for the game yeah but then I'm not sure really sure what the um, the player could do to actually Get those pets. If that makes sense. Mm. And I kind of need to figure out a way to um, for the player to travel from one area to another as well. Because for now, I kind of have um, I can only have like this, like an island. That's it. Hmm. I think the different areas as well it maybe should be only some sort of a set size and let's say if you go to the corner of the of the area there'd be maybe like a forest or something and maybe like a big wall and then you would need to talk with another npc just to, and pay something just to go to the different zone um That sounds pretty, pretty good though. Then let's say uh, you could encounter different types of um, pets in different, different areas of the uh, different biomes and stuff. Because for now, I have uh, I have the forest one and I have the, uh, the sand ones, so or like the desert biome. Let's say in the desert biome, you could maybe find like um, I don't know, a snake or something. That'd be kind of cool, right? What else lives in desert? Scorpios, scorpions, something like that. Anyway, uh, okay, cool. Oh yeah, I just want to quickly fix once as well. So the player doesn't get stuck on the walls. Um, here. Uh, crash for a second. Okay. Player doesn't get stuck on the walls. Yeah, Scarf, yeah. I think I need to kind of try to do more textures for different different pets and stuff. Oh yeah, I'm not sure Gabriel was all uh, what I've done in the last last live stream. So I switch to the to this bit. So um, I managed to add um, a different character as well. 
the skeleton kind of character into the game. Looks, looks pretty okay, I think. <laughs> so I think that's going to be the, the four starting uh, characters. It's going to be like um, male, female, that's the goblin kind of type of character. And that's the skeleton. So I kind of added these uh, three different starting uh, items for the um, skeleton. And then for the goblin, I added these two as well. That was kind of the, the default one. And then these two were added. Pretty, pretty cool. Oops. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'll see, um, oh yeah, I was kind of th thinking to do maybe some kind of a buildings as well, start start uh, drawing some textures for the buildings and stuff, so that we can, um, yeah, we can like interact with them, maybe buy different haircuts or hats or something like that, that's going to be probably just in the future. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I've been live for like uh, an hour now. I think I'm just gonna finish it up here. <laughs> Don't want it to make it a bit too long. So yeah, I'll try to try to do more stuff off off screen and then create another um, devlog, just explaining what I did and stuff. But, uh, I think it was four days ago when I uploaded the the last devlog. Yeah, it was four days ago. So I'll try to maybe upload it like the next three, three days. Yeah, that sounds pretty, pretty cool. So yeah. <laughs> Mounting would be yeah, mounting would be another cool thing to do. Wonder if that that'd be hard to do. Probably not. Just that I could have just attached the pet to the player or the other way around. Yeah, that'd be pretty pretty cool. Attack or maybe then let's say different pets could like jump higher or run faster or something like that. Be pretty cool. That's a good, that's a good idea, Gabriel. <laughs> Take it down somewhere. Uh, don't forget. Okay. Anyway, I think I'll just finish up up just here t for today. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining in, and um, I'll see you on the next uh, devlog or the next live stream. Oh yeah, I'm gonna actually save this uh, this video as well. So if anyone wants to just look over it and stuff and see. How everything works. They can too. Okay, cool. Well, thanks a lot again, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.